Wow, hello, welcome to the Hawley Baptist Church online service. It's great to have you with us. My name is Martin. I'm one of the ministers of the church and I just wanted to welcome you. But I just want to say that uh, if this is your first time here or if you've been coming for a while, we would love to make contact uh, with you. And the best way of doing that is for you to make contact with us and there's different ways you can do that firstly you can email us at join.in at hawleybaptist.org.uk you can just say hi say who you are and uh, we'd love to have a chat with you if you have any any particular prayer requests then there is a confidential prayer email which is prayer at hawleybaptist.org.uk and there are people there who just want to chat to you and pray for you regardless of whatever that situation uh, may be so do email us or you can find us on facebook just search for holy baptist church uh, in the facebook search bar uh, find our facebook page and do like our facebook page and then you will be kept up to date with anything that's happening uh, also you can message us through the facebook messenger bit of the uh, facebook page and just let us know that you're there and we'd love to once again uh, make contact and have a chat with you. The other way of doing it is to go to our website www.hawleybaptist.org.uk and you can go to the contact us section and click on uh, the section you want to contact us and uh, just fill out the online form and that will go to our administrator. So yeah, just let us know that you're there you can, if you're watching this live, feel free to write in the comment section below uh, and uh, we'd love to just greet you and welcome you and yeah, we'd love you to be part of our fellowship. Have a great day, enjoy the service and uh, hopefully one day I might be able to meet you face to face. Bye.
but the main thing is we do about four worship songs, um, we have time for prayer, it's live on Facebook, so therefore we can interact with people, so we get people commenting, we get people saying hello usually, but also prayer requests, which if we can we respond to in the evening, also we'll be praying through, through the week. So we'd love you to join us, because yeah. um, it's a, turned out to be a really nice knit community where we have just been able to worship together and even though we are speaking into a camera like we are now we feel sense when we're doing the Friday night worships that we are a close community worshiping together and it's a lovely time and we yeah. would love you to join us so and that's enjoy that that's us. Friday night eight o'clock on our Facebook page yes, um, not you, YouTube not but YouTube. it's in YouTube later you can catch up <laughs> on YouTube later so look on Facebook page or look on YouTube for previous um, and it's live, shows, so but it is anything. live on Facebook, like kids turning up and dogs barking and stuff like that. Yes. But yeah, so that's it. So do join us. It'd be really, really good to have you uh, join us for that. Yes. Look forward to seeing you on a Friday. Yeah. Cheerio.
morning everyone and welcome to Sunday morning at HBC. It's great to have you here with us on this morning. I'm Angie. And I'm Neil. And we're with you for the next little while. We'll be with you for 10 or 15 minutes and the, the whole service is about 40, 45 minutes and we just I hope and pray you'll have a good time with us this morning. Thank you to Dennis as always uh, for playing us in this morning. It's the highlight of everyone's week. I'm we sure. love Dennis playing. I know, I'm, I know. I know envy is a bad thing, but I wish I could play like Dennis. <laughs> but thank you, Dennis, for bringing us into worship uh, this morning. As we're gathering, we thought it'd be good to uh, just to have a bit of a catch up to see where you are. And this week we were thinking, um, we've been doing lots of turning out um, in lockdown. We have. I know. And this week we're looking at lots of old cassettes that we had. And it just made us think, what was the first record that we bought? So if you want to uh, put in the chat, um, what was the first record that you bought? I can't remember what I bought first. I think it I think it might have been one of those compilations. It might have even been now that's what I call music, but the very first one. Mm, I think I'm embarrassed to say that my first record was um Tiger Feet by Mud. Oh dear. There we go. <laughs> that's a bit of a classic. <laughs> Perhaps. <Yeah. laughs> and we've got some we've got a few sort of notices. Yep, so the first thing I want to tell you about is two new things um, we want to tell you about. Firstly, this evening at eight o'clock. Um, there was a chance to join uh, Martin and Chris Tilling and Daz as we review our sermon series of Looking Like Jesus. And um, today is the last one in that series. So come and join us at eight o'clock on Facebook and YouTube and, um, and there'll be a chance to interact as well. So, um, yeah, that's that. Yeah. See you at eight o'clock. That sounds good. And also new, uh, starting tomorrow, we're really privileged and blessed to have been provided with a series of short talks. Um, by the staff and tutors from Spurgeon's College, including our own Deborah and Joshua. So these are, they're about 15 minute talks on the fruit of the spirit. And it's really just so that we have an opportunity to engage with something maybe a little bit deeper, but they're not really deep. Don't be put off by that. Um, and they're gonna be available on the Holy Baptist Church uh, Going Deeper Facebook group and the Bible Talk group. And also there'll be an, a link emailed out to the congregation tomorrow. Now, if you would like that link, if you'd like to invo um, get involved with these, and then just email the usual join.in um, at holybaptist.org and we'll send you to the link. But that starts tomorrow. So every Monday for the next, however many weeks, nine weeks, um, just a short talk um, on the fruit of the spirit. It'd be great for people to, to watch those and then comment so we can have a, a dialogue about those. I think the first one is actually the principal of Spurgeon's Bible College, um, Philip McCormack, and he's speaking on love which fits in very well with our present sermon series. Hmm. So uh, there's two things, um, one for this evening and then one uh, for Monday. Now let's look at the um, answers to the um, top records. I've actually got the top selling record of every decade going back to the 1950s. So depending on how old you are, um, perhaps one of these might uh, ring a bell. So uh, 2010s, the Best selling single was Ed Sheeran and Shape of You. Obviously. 2000, Will Young, Anything is Possible. Don't know that one either. <laughs> Coming back towards our age. Here we go. 1990s, Elton John, Candle in the Wind. I think that was a, a re release. A re -release. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, 1980s, uh, Band Aid, Do They Know It's Christmas. Uh, in the 70s, uh, Paul McCartney and Wings, that dreadful song, Mull of, <laughs> Mull of Kintyre. I remember learning to play that on the guitar. It wasn't that difficult. You know. <laughs> 1960s, you wouldn't remember this, I'm sure. No, uh, the Beatles, She Loves You. And for those that are slightly older still, 1950s, Bill Haley, Rock Around the Clock. So they were the greatest selling singles um, of the last uh, 70 years or so. We're a bit um, out of touch, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right, moving on. So join in photographs. We love you join in pictures each week. Um, this week was by your front door. Um, who knew there were so many different colours and, and varieties? Um, for next week, we thought it'd be great if you could share your favourite mug. Yep. I can't think why we decided that. I think it's just, well... It's... Oh, it's National Hot Chocolate Day. Oh, is it? Yes, it's National Hot Chocolate Day. So we thought I'd picture your favourite mug. This is mine. Um, my favourite mug. It was my mum's and she always gave me a cup of tea no, when I went to see her. I think I should be bought it for her. But, oh, it's right. Mine. And this is my favourite mug. It's, I don't know if you can see that, it's um, a Crystal Palace mug and it's got all their strips for the last hundred years or so. So, yeah, that's the one I usually drink my coffee out of. So, so yeah. you want a picture of you with your favourite mug and send it to the usual address, join.in at hallybaptist.org.uk and we'll look at those next week. Yeah. 
Now we've got loads coming up. We've got songs, we've got prayers, we've got an interview. Um, we've got Martin preaching on the last of the series of Living Like Jesus. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And we're thinking about love today. So let's just remind ourselves um, of what Jesus said about love. So we've got a verse. It's from John chapter 15, verse 12. And the verse says this. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. It's great, isn't it? We're called to love each other. And we've got the great example of Jesus as we love each other. But now we're going to hand over to Helen and Robin and uh, Noah uh, for some songs. See you in a minute. See you. Morning, everybody. Say hello. Good job. Uh, so thanks, Mum and Dad. Um, and as they've just said, we're now going to worship together uh, in song and shaking things where we can't sing. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this morning, uh, as we look at love, uh, we're going to sing a couple of songs that really talk about God's love for us and how incredible it is. And we're going to start with um, a real classic um, and one that's well loved in this house, uh, for sure, uh, which is Here is Love, Vast as the Ocean. Lord, thank you uh, that you have done everything for us. Lord, that it was uh, through that mount of crucifixion uh, that we can come to you uh, once again in that perfect relationship. Lord, in your name, Amen. And <laughs> we're now going to sing another song, which has got more dancing and more actions, yes. Noah. Yeah. Are you going to be dancing? Or are you going to be grunting? Oh, oh no! Take mommy's glasses I'll take mommy's glasses off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But we're going to sing um, an old classic, aren't we? We're going to sing Jesus' Love is Very Wonderful. Here we Come go. on again. Thanks. Yeah. Little tambourine. Jesus' love 
So we've, it's almost all from us. We've got, um, well, on the theme of living like Jesus, um, we've got an interview with Jill Martin um, with an update about Holy Food Bank. That'd be good to listen to. Um, but before then, we've got um, a short clip of a friend fro of uh, Fred and Kath, a chap called uh, Martin Bateman. And um, I was listening to another service last week from an online service in Lancaster. And Martin was talking about um, uh, one of my childhood heroes, Eric Liddell, he was a, an athlete and a rugby player and um, the theme of uh, Chariots of Fire film. And, um, and I just thought in our service this morning about love and sacrifice, the story of Eric Liddell fitted really well. So here's a three minute clip of um, Martin um, talking at a service um, last week. Um, hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Um, yeah, and that's we'll, it. And we'll see you later. And I'll see you later on. And our talents can be used by God for good. Jesus says that we pray that God sends forth workers into the harvest field. What are workers? They're people that use their gifts and talents and skills to be able to do something. And 100 years, 118 years ago, yesterday, the 16th of January 1902, one of the world's fastest men ever was born. Eric Liddell was born in China, grew up in England, went to university in Edinburgh almost 100 years ago to the day. He was studying and he became a rugby player and then one of the world's fastest men. And in the 1924 Olympics, he refused to run on a Sunday in the 100 metres. But then Chariots of Fire shows us that in the 400 metres, he won gold medal and he became a national and international hero. At one point, he talks to his sister in the movie Chariots of Fire and they're talking about going to China and still becoming Christian workers in China. And he says, I do want to go to China, but God has made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. And that's what God enjoys. If you've got talents and you've got skills, he wants to see you using them for his glory and then directing people to see where that skill and talent comes from to be able to and bring more people to know him. That's what Eric Liddell did. And he had a great influence through his sporting prowess. But he wasn't just willing to stick to the sport. He had fame and fortune and um, he could have just carried on preaching and teaching. When he came back from the Olympics, he spoke to thousands of people around Scotland and Britain and many people around the world heard of his story because he was willing to testify to having faith in Jesus. But he knew he had to go to China. So two years later, he went to China and he spent the next 20 years of his life serving communities there, trying to help them know more about faith in Jesus. Now the Japanese came and invaded in the Second World War and they interned all of the people that he was part of in the community where he was working. There were loads of kids involved in that community and so there were hundreds of them in this internment camp run by the Japanese in China. And um, the Japanese were not a great regime at the time to be in, and they were very cruel to some of the people that were in their prison camps. And it was difficult for those kids and difficult for Eric Liddell as well. But he threw himself into activities for them, into doing sport with them, and to being helping them to be able to get hope in the middle of a pretty hopeless situation. Those were his talents that he was using, but he also left a legacy. And I wonder today what your legacy might be.
Recently, in preparation for my daily Bible reading, it asks you to fix your mind on Jesus and think about the aspects of his character and nature that came to mind. The words that came into my head were welcoming and accepting. Each Friday as I go to Hawley Food Bank, I want to be able to show God's love. One way that this can be done is to reflect the welcoming and accepting nature of Jesus. Many people are arriving at Food Bank telling us they never expected to be in this situation of having to come and ask for help with food and basic necessities. Some are distraught. Some come across as abrupt. Some are bewildered. Our first job is to welcome them, to put them at ease, explain how the system works, what can be given beyond the basic carrier bags of food, how often they can come and visit. Due to the unprecedented circumstances we are now in, some people are regular visitors coming each week to see us. As the team of volunteers is also the same each week, we've had a chance to build relationships with our clients, getting to know their names, who would rather have coffee instead of the tea provided, who needs pet food, what size nappies they require. In these ways, we're able to show respect and care for those who come. For a few people, we are probably the only ones that they speak to week to week. All that we are able to provide has been generously donated by the people of Hawley. We're amazed each time at the drive-in and drop-offs, when people give what they can. Some arrive with cars loaded, others bring smaller amounts but still gratefully received. A call went out recently for cereal as our cupboards were just about empty. Within a short space of time the cupboard is full and there are stacks of cereal piled up ready for when they're needed. People reflecting the loving nature of God as they give when the need is expressed. Be imitators of God as dearly loved children and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. By grace alone, somehow I stand where even angels fear to tread Invited by redeeming love Before the throne of God above He pulls me close with nail-scarred hands Into his everlasting Beauty 
Meatloaf famously sang, I will do anything for love, but I won't do that. I mean, have you experienced love like that? Love with a but in it, love with boundaries, love with conditions, love that will not do certain things. Perhaps love that was spoken, but not acted out. A fair weather love that only appeared when the going was easy, but disappeared when things got hard. How do you love? What sort of love do you have? Do you place conditions on your love? I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. Well, let's look at the example that Jesus set, the lessons that he taught to his disciples and also to us about love and how it should be acted out. Towards the end of John's story about Jesus Christ, he talks about some of the last moments that Jesus spends with his disciples before he dies on the cross. And the scene is an evening meal. But actually the atmosphere was really tense because the political situation was getting a little bit dicey for Jesus and his followers. And Jesus hints heavily at there being a traitor in their midst. And he says that Peter, arguably his closest friend, is going to betray him when push comes to shove. But then Jesus had something really important, a lesson that he wanted his followers to learn before he went to his death on the cross. Now the disciples had already started their meal. You can imagine them reclining uh, on cushions, eating bean stew, um, eating bread, roast um, lamb and olives. And then Jesus does something really out of character, something really strange. He gets up from eating, he takes off his outer garment, he ties a towel round his waist and he fetches a bowl of water. And you can probably imagine the disciples stopping and wondering what on earth Jesus was up to. And then Jesus does something which would have been totally unthinkable he started to wash his friend's feet. Now let's stop there because that is pretty disgusting. I mean, not only would their feet have been a little bit cheesy, but they'd be walking around in the dust and the grime and far worse of the local roads. I mean, this was a job that no one wanted to do. The disciples obviously didn't want to do it because they were already tucking into their food despite having dirty feet. You wouldn't even expect a Jewish slave to wash someone's feet. 
So there is no way that Jesus, a respected rabbi, the one that disciples called their Lord, there is no way that he should be on his hands and knees washing their feet. And Peter, the unofficial spokesman for the group, pipes up and says, you're not going to wash my feet, are you? There is no way you are going to wash my feet. And then this dialogue starts between Jesus and Peter, where Peter says, don't wash me. And Jesus says, if I don't wash you, then you're not part of me. So Peter says, well, wash all of me then. And it gets a little bit complicated and weird. But then Jesus puts on his outer garments. He puts the bowl and the towel away and he sits down and he starts to explain to his disciples the lesson he wants them to learn. So Jesus explains that he washes their feet because he is their Lord and their teacher, because he wants to set them an example to do as he has done. After all, a slave isn't better than his master. So if Jesus was willing, as their Lord and their teacher, to get down on his hands and knees and wash their feet, then there is absolutely no reason why they shouldn't be happy to do the same. Now the account that I've just told you is found in John chapter 13. And if you look at that chapter, which I'd really encourage you to do so, you find that at the beginning, it talks about love. Let me read verse 1 to you. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He now showed the disciple the full extent of his love. But then if we look towards the end of chapter 13, we find that John records the words of Jesus, which once again talk about love. Let me read it to you. Verse 34, so now I am giving you a new commandment, love each other, just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So here we have a chapter, an account, which has at either end of it stuff about love and that should be a significant clue to us that actually what we have between these two verses about love is actually a demonstration of love being acted out by Jesus. A demonstration that Jesus wants to see his disciples emulate in their own lives. And what we see in Jesus' demonstration is a love which is humble, it's hard, it's demeaning even. I mean, it must have been hard for Jesus because Jesus knew what was just around the corner. He knew that his disciples, his friends would desert him. He knew that Judas was the traitor. In fact, it's part way through the meal that Judas gets up leads them and goes and tells the authorities where they can find Jesus so that they can arrest him. And yet Jesus still washed his feet. Despite everything, Jesus still loved them completely. And I think the craziest thing is found in verse 3 of chapter 13. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from the from God and would return to God so he got up and he went and washed the disciples feet see Jesus knew who he was he knew that he was God incarnate he was God with us he is God that moved into the world he knew the power and the authority that he had as his rights and John said it's because of that that Jesus got on his hands and knees and did a task that even a Jewish slave would turn his nose up at. Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, said it like this in Philippians chapter 2. 
Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave. It was in Jesus' nature to be a humble slave, putting others before himself, demonstrating his love for his disciples, not through poetic words or nice gifts, but by willing to get his hands dirty, to do the hard thing, to swallow his pride. And it was in Jesus' nature because it was in God's nature as well. I mean, the fact that Jesus, God in human form, was there in the first place is indicative not only of the love that God has for us, but the humble nature God has. that He was willing to step into the mess and the muck of this world to do something that no one else would be willing to do because he loved us and was willing to do anything and give up anything in order to save us. You see, Paul, when he wrote those words, wasn't talking about Jesus washing the disciples' feet. Now, he point, he's talking about something that occurs just after this incident at this evening meal. You see, Jesus washing the disciples' feet was just an echo. It was pointing towards something that would be happening just the next day when Jesus would be crucified on the cross dying as a criminal so that we don't have to. In fact, John wrote these words later in life in a letter. It's found in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. This is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. So where does that leave us? If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, and that leaves you with a massive challenge, a challenge to love and serve and make sacrifices even when the going gets tough, even when life gets hard, even when those actions of love are unreciprocated, even if you don't particularly like the person. Because Jesus says that when you act in love, well, that's a telltale sign that you are one of my followers. So it means getting our hands dirty. It means stepping down to the mess and muck of life rather than standing at a distance. It's about taking risks, it's about getting your heart broken because ultimately love without action is meaningless. In fact, Mother Teresa who committed a lifetime to serving the most vulnerable and needy in our world said these words. Love cannot remain by itself. It has no meaning. Love has to be put into action, and that action is service. See, Jesus loves everyone. In fact, he loves you, even if you don't believe it. It's true. And he showed that love through acts of service and sacrifice. And as a follower of Jesus Christ, he is asking you to do the same. And that's a big ask. Hi guys, it's me. Um, sorry to interrupt you, but I just thought I'd remind you of something that is happening this evening. It's really exciting. We're going to be following up this sermon series, Living Like Jesus, that has come to an end today. We're going to follow it up tonight with a discussion between myself and um, Chris and Daz and we're going to just talk about what we've learned and what's challenged us and maybe just take things a little bit deeper so do join us this evening at 8 p.m we're going to be broadcasting live from just Facebook uh, this time we're just experimenting with this so eight o'clock at Facebook going deeper and yeah come along hear the chat join in by typing in the chat underneath and it'd be lovely just to 
see what you've got to say and also see what Daz and Chris have got to say as well. So that's tonight, 8 p.m. on Facebook live for about 30 to 40 minutes. So see you then. Let's get back to the questions. Bye. Our Father, at this time of continued restriction and uncertainty, let us not be consumed by the negativity and fear that is around us. Let us be reminded of the many examples of your love at work in our lives. Let us give thanks to all those who serve in our National Health Service. Lord, as more and more people are becoming unwell, we pray for all those who are fighting to save lives. For those on the front line who are now very tired and weary, who are working longer hours with fewer resources, and with greater risk of contracting the new strain of coronavirus themselves. Renew their energy and sustain them on long shifts. Give them protection when doing their work and equip them with the resources they need to keep safe. We thank you for all those employed in the COVID testing centres, working around the clock to ensure people have prompt access to tests and their test results. Thank you for all those working within the Test and Trace programme, providing practical and emotional support those, to those self-isolating at home. Equip them, Lord Jesus, with the strength to sustain their jobs amidst increasing anxiety. Let them find the right words of comfort and reassurance. We thank you for all those working within the vaccination programme. Thank you for the collaborative efforts of the research scientists, pharmaceutical experts, GP practices and the armed forces in logistically delivering the vaccine to those that need it. We pray that the vaccine brings comfort and healing to our nation. Continue to inspire and invigorate those working on developing better tests to diagnose, to create further vaccines to prevent it, and to identify protocols to eliminate its spread. We give thanks to all those working in care, particularly those working in care homes and those family members providing informal care, many without any respite. Lord, we ask that you protect them and that in you they can find the strength to keep going, that there will be an end to this pandemic. We give thanks to all those people working in education, for those working hard to provide a blend of face-to-face -face and remote learning, whilst also juggling the needs of their own families. Bless them with creativity and the stamina to know that their efforts make a huge difference and prompt worn out parents to speak words of kindness and encouragement to their children during their days of homeschool. We thank you that we have the technology and resources to stay connected at home we thank you for all those who are working hard to provide equipment and training to those less fortunate so that they can stay connected and engage in learning-based activities. We're so very grateful for the education system in our country, for schools and those organisations and individuals that offer remote learning packages. Father, we thank you for our government, for our nation's laws and the organisations there to protect us. While we may not always agree with the timing of or the decisions made, let us be thankful that we live in a democratic society. We pray for honest and clear communication so that messages can be received and heeded. Lord, we ask that you help people to do the right thing and stay home instead of traveling or going out needlessly. We give thanks to all those in our community who give up their time to provide food and meals to those in need, to those who volunteer in the food bank, as well as those within our own church family, providing warm meals and pastoral care. 
There are just so many examples, Lord, from the ground to those small acts of kindness that have a huge impact on our lives. Help us at this time to appreciate all that we have. We ask this in your name. Amen. That's just about all for this morning. Thank you for being with us. We hope you've uh, found it a helpful morning. Hope you've been able to worship as we've been together this morning. A few reminders. Um, Zoom coffee straight after the service. If you've got the link for that, if you haven't, you can email at join.in and we'll quickly send the link to you. Yep, we look forward to seeing you then. Um, don't forget this evening, eight o'clock, um, sort of recap of the whole sermon series. Uh, it'd be great to see you uh, for that as well. And tomorrow uh, from 10 o'clock, um, the video from Spurgeon's will be out. Um, again, if you want the link to that, just email us and we'll let, uh, send it to you. Or you can find that on Facebook or you'll get an email if you're on the email list in the morning. But other than that, we've got one more song now. Um, yep. And then uh, goodbye and have a great week um, living like Jesus. Don't Take forget care. your photographs. Bye. Oh, yeah, photos. <laughs> Bye.